All right, hello, and uh, welcome back to another video. So this is my uh, games that I've beaten in March in the 2024 Backlog Challenge. So you may notice straight away a slightly different backdrop. Um, I previously had the, my backdrop was my games, but it was in my office. So I had like a, a an office slash game room uh, combined. Um, I've now moved out of there and that's now my, my wife's office. And I have an office which I'm in now um, and a game room, so separate rooms. That that door there is uh, oh, is my game room. That one over there <laughs> is, my, is my game room. So a completely separate room now, which is really, really good for gaming, but it's making these videos more difficult. So I'm still figuring out what I'm gonna do because um, obviously the, the backdrop's a bit boring now. It's terrible lighting in here. Um, this is kind of like a, a room that's in between our kitchen and our lounge. Um, so it's not got any windows on it. Um, so I'm illuminated by big lighting rigs either side of me, but it's still not great. So bear with me for this month. I'm gonna try and make it a bit better. I'm trying to figure out a way to film in the gaming room, but this is all connected up to my PC. So it's it's, it's, it's difficult. I, I don't wanna like reassemble my PC in there every time I wanna film. So. I think I'll probably just make some kind of backdrop behind here and try and improve the lighting. Um, so yeah, bear with me on that. But anyway, moving on. The games that I've played this month. Yeah, so I have made some slight changes um, to the backlog challenge, mainly adding <laughs> games to the list. I'll come onto that more later once I've talked through the games I've beaten um, and just showed the revised lists and things like that. Um, but yeah, let's start off by what game, what games I've been playing. So I'm still playing through Dragon's Dogma. Um, still enjoying it. It's just quite a long game and I'm kind of using that as a, like a base game that I'm playing in between other games. So I'm, I'm probably, this month I've probably only played it kind of one evening a week for a couple of hours. So I'm slowly chipping away at it. Um, but it's going to take some time. I've got no intention of, of stopping playing it at all. So I think it, it will get beaten. It's just, I don't know how long it's going to take because I think it's like a 50, 60 hour game and I'm only about maybe 20 hours in now. So that's going to take a bit of time, but that's still on on the go. Um, in terms of games I've beaten, I've beaten uh, three games this month, which I think is reasonable going, but they're all quite small games. Um, first up, we've got um, the original Max Payne on, uh, I played it on the original Xbox, but through backwards compatibility through the Series X. So I think it, it makes it look a bit nicer. Um, original price, 40, 44 pounds <laughs> from Asda. I didn't pay that. <laughs> I think I paid a couple of quid or something. So Matt's Payne, I had a really good time with this game. It's kind of like a third person action shooter. Um, and the, the, big, the big selling point, the big USP of this is like the slow motion. So I think most people probably know about Matt's Payne, but for those that don't, it's you can just pull the left trigger anytime and you kind of move into slow motion. So if you can dive sideways, like shooting um, slow motion, you can roll forward, dive backwards, um, even just stand still. And, and shoot and aim in slow motion. So that's the main mechanic of the game that set, separates it from other games of, of its type in the shooter space. In terms of the gameplay, I think it still holds up really well. I had a really good time with this game, like even today. The, the first kind of 10, 20 minutes you're playing it, it feels very dated, just because the nature of it, if you've been playing modern games and go back to any kind of older retro game, it's gonna feel a bit jarring to start with, but I got used to it very, very quickly. Um, and I had a really good time playing through it. The shooting feels good. It doesn't feel like it does in modern shooters, but I easily got used to it. I'm just having a really good time. I think the actual gameplay of it is the strongest part of the game. There's a nice variety of weapons. I did end up using kind of one or two weapons, but I, I tend to do that in most games, kind of one or two weapons to suit my gameplay style better or are often just better than the others, aren't they? So I, I ended up just using mainly using the shotgun um, and further down the lane, there's like an assault rifle you get, which is quite useful as well. But it's it's so satisfying. So like, you can because it's third person, you can kind of see around the corner. 
before you actually have to go around the corner. So if you see there's like three men in a room, you can like run and slow motion dive around the corner, either with a shotgun, like slow motion blasting them in your air or like dual pistols or something. And um, it's just really, really good fun. It's very satisfying to play. The level design, I would say, is is very much of its time. I think they probably had limitations on on what they could um, what they could do in terms of what they could fit on the desk on the disc and um, computing power and stuff. So it's it's what you'd expect of that time. They all seem to be quite similar, just like corridors, quite grey, drab buildings where most rooms are kind of very similar to the previous room you were in, kind of repeated textures and things. Um, there are there are a variety of different locations, but they all kind of have that same kind of feel. There are some kind of like trippy levels, which is quite commonplace in, in modern games, I think. But I don't. I reckon this game was quite revolutionary in doing it. But where like you're on drugs and things, and you're hallucinating and going through these like dream sequences and things, which I think were a nice idea in in terms of like variety of gameplay and mixing it up and expanding the story. But it does expose the game's main weakness in my point of view, which is like the platforming. So it's very much primarily a shooter, but there are some kind of platforming element elements to the game. And in these kind of dream sequences, they're mainly platforming levels where you've got to follow like this kind of red line, which is actually like a, a, a ledge just in this black space and kind of follow it and jump from ledge to ledge um, and try and find your way out of this kind of like maze. But it's so easy to fall off. <laughs> the, the 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 platforming is it's not um, it's not like accurate. It's it's not kind of. I, I found it really difficult to repeat the same jumps over and over again. Sometimes you'd slide a bit further. Sometimes you'd just fall off the edge when you thought you were in the middle. And that's probably the most frustrating part of the actual gameplay. But apart from that, I, I thought it was a very enjoyable game to play through. The stories is pretty decent. For it's nothing groundbreaking. I think, like. I wouldn't say it's a must play for the story, but it's it's serviceable. Um, you're basically, this is right at the start, so it's not, I wouldn't really consider it spoilers, but you're a, a cop whose wife and kids get murdered, like at the start of the game, it's very brutal, it's quite a dark game, but they get murdered by these people that are on, on this drug, and basically you go on a killing rampage after that to try and find who's responsible and get revenge, and that expands and there's some twists and turns along the way um, and I thought the story was quite good they there's not like big cutscenes or anything playing out the story all of the story is told through these kind of like comic strip style things with narration um, and yeah I think it would have been better with actual cutscenes but again I think it's probably a limitation of the time and maybe the budget this was the first in the Max Payne game so they might not have had much of a budget to work with um, but it, it works perfectly well, and you pick up um, kind of like story blocks through the levels you're going through. So you answer phones or see newspaper articles or find notes and things. And whenever you find one of these, it will go into like a little comic book story scene for like 30 seconds or a minute. So I find it quite good. It's quite a good way of getting the story across. Um, and yeah, all in all, a pretty pretty decent game. I think it. I just played it on the default difficulty. But it's, it is quite a challenging game. The thing that makes it easier, though, is... Because I did die quite a few times, but the save system is very... Well, it's as generous as you can be, basically. You can just pause it and save at any point. So if you have just won a battle, if you wanted to, you could save it. Um, and then get through the next battle and save it again. It's not like a checkpoint system. If you die, you, you spawn back at the last point and you save. So you can just constantly save if you want. So even if you're dying quite a bit, you're never going back too far. So that does make it a very playable game, I think, for even if you're not the best at shooters. You're not going to have to be like backtracking to the start of the level or anything. It's, it makes it quite quite straightforward. But all in all, um, my first I've, I've seen gameplay footage of Max Payne before, and I might have even played it for a little bit at a mate's house or something when it first came out. But my first time properly playing Max Payne, and I was quite impressed. I'm very much looking forward to the playing through Max Payne 2 and 3, which I, I own both of. Um, so I, I'd give this game an 8 out of 10. I think if you like the shooter genre it's and, and like retro gaming, um, then it's, it's kind of a must play, I think. Right, next up. So this month I wanted to start playing some different genres um, and different periods. So Max Payne, I went back to the original Xbox. 
This one is it's on the Xbox One, but it's a, a genre I've never really played that much, and that is a Cinemora uh, EX, Cinemora EX, which is a shmup. I have owned and played Shmups and Pass right back when I was a kid on the SNES. We had R Type, one of the R Type games, and I remember I have memories of playing just the first like level or two of that when I was like a small kid because I could never get any further. Um, but I have memories of playing that, um, but I've never really been that into the genre. So I thought I'd give this one a go and see. It's supposed to be quite a good one, and uh, just see if I can kind of increase my um, thirst for the genre. <laughs> strange way of putting it isn't it <laughs> just to see if I like the genre and see if I want to play more of them um, so I had quite a good time with this game I'm not very good at shmups so I'm going to do a little mini review here for those that are good at shmups some of what I'm saying you may be like rolling your eyes at um, as I say this is the first shmup I've ever played all the way through it is not my genre I'm not good at them so take that with a pinch of salt if you are really good at shmups um, but yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with this, and the more I played it, the more I enjoyed it, because I started to kind of get used to it, get used to the mechanics, and, and started to get a little bit better at, at what I was doing. Um, but the, the mechanics of this I really enjoyed, I thought, again, having not played many others, I've got not much to compare it to, but I thought it had really solid mechanics, I, I thought the movement and the shooting was all kind of quite accurate and felt really quite tight, really good. The, it is a bullet hell shooter, so there's like, at times, there's easier levels, but there's at times where there's bullets just everywhere. Um, and when I first started, I just, I just couldn't avoid them. I was just getting hit constantly. But the more practice I had and the more I played through the game, I started to get a bit better. I, could, I still can't do levels without getting hit, but I'm far better than I was. And I think it's just getting into that mind frame because you're, it's different to most games where you think of like a first person shoot or something, you're just looking at the target. You're not having to look at what your gun is doing. Whereas in a shmup, you've got to look at the target, which is like where the, the enemy bullets are coming from, but you've also got to look at your ship. So most games, you're just looking at one thing. Whereas in a shmup, you're looking at two things, the bullets you're trying to avoid and your your craft to move, move around and try and dodge them. So that for me took a little bit of getting used to. Um, but yeah, as I say, I was getting through it and, and was, was definitely improving as I went. So I've, I've, I've beaten the game. I played through the entire game. Um, and then I went back and started doing some challenges and things to unlock some of the achievements. And I didn't play through the entire story again, but I think I effectively end up like beating the game again just by doing different levels for challenges and things. Uh, but the basic mechanic of this game, apart from it just being a, a basic shmup, is that you it works on time. And if you run out of time, you get game over. Every time you kill an enemy, you gain time. And if you complete certain objectives, you get like a bigger boost of time. And there's checkpoints through the level where your time bank will reset. And every time you get hit, you lose time. So yeah, that's, that's the kind of mechanic they've come up with, which works quite nicely. And you do have nail biting moments where you've got like five seconds left and no enemies are on screen and it's counting down and then suddenly some enemies will appear and you've got to try and kill them as quick as you can to get your time bank back up. Um, and if you're going through like a section where it's like proper bullet hell, bullets everywhere and you get hit, you, you come in with like a minute of time, you think you're safe and you just get hit constantly and uh, your, your time starts sinking, it gets a bit nail biting. I say for, for anyone new to the genre, this would probably be a good, a good one to start. People that are more experienced, please put suggestions in the comments for for other ones that would be good for beginners because I, I don't know obviously but I found this like a reasonable challenge but at the same time quite easy to get through the story on the normal difficulty level and it does have extra difficulty levels so you can certainly up the difficulty once you get through it once. There's a nice um, range of uh, weapons so there's, you don't really change your weapons during um, a level you unlock characters as you go who each have their own ship and each ship has its own weapons. So you have your primary weapon, which is slightly different for each ship, and then you have your secondary weapon, which is like the, the special weapon, like the big blast or a massive laser that comes out or something. The ones that you can the one that you can only use a few times per level. Um, and your base weapon, you pick up um, upgrades during the level, which will 
upgrade that base weapon from like one up to I don't know if it goes up to like eight or ten but you can upgrade it a huge amount and every time you get hit all of those upgrades um, you lose all of those upgrades and they'll they'll kind of burst out of your ship um, and like all back in in the level so you can pick them up again straight away if you can get them to, if you can get to them quick enough but if you can't you then you then lose those upgrades and I think that's a very important aspect of the game is upgrading as quick as you can and then holding on to those upgrades because it makes such a difference having a maxed up primary weapon to kind of a weaker one it makes everything far far easier um, but yeah there's, some, there's definitely some difficult sections one of the most difficult sections I found was kind of two thirds of the way through the game it's a level where you're not even fight well you're not really fighting enemies you're you're shooting you go into this maze basically which is constantly rotating and you and there's lasers and things going on through it and you've just got to make your way through it and get to the center of the maze and this took me like 10 attempts <laughs> and when i eventually i think you get like nine continues the setting i had it on quite easy um the first time i did it i got through on my final continue but then that wasn't the end of the level and it got, went through to another section and then a boss and I died at the boss and I had to go right back because I'd run out of continues. I had to go right back to the beginning of that entire stage and do it all over again. Um, but once I'd done it, doing it again, I did it first time just because I practiced it so much. But that was the only real section of the game that I got properly stuck on. There was another level, maybe two, that I, I did have to try again, but nowhere near to that, to that extent. Um, so most of the game is, is quite manageable, I think. One of the main things I noticed straight away, and it, I think it improves during the game, is the the backdrops. They're stunning. Um, and it can be quite distracting because I'm wanting to look at the backdrops, but obviously you, you don't have much time to stop and admire the view because there's constantly like hundreds of bullets coming at you. Um, but yeah, they've done a really good job at the backdrops. Really nice art style, and there's huge variety between between levels in terms of what what scenery what environment you're fighting in um, and they've done a really good job on some really kind of stunning dramatic backdrops so I really, I really enjoyed that aspect of the game the story to be honest I really can't speak to you that much because I just skipped it all the first level I was listening to the story but it's just stole it's just told through just still images well, not even images it's just the text coming up on screen and a very 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 slow narration so it just a page of text takes about five minutes to listen to. And I, I was just like, no, just get me back into the action. Um, so I, I just skipped it all after the first. So I had no idea what was going on in the story. <laughs> I can't speak to that. But it was enjoyable even without the story. Um, I think, again, it's one of those with budgets, I assume. If it had been cut scenes or even just a bit more effort than just text and narration, I, I would have paid a bit more attention to the story. But um, no, it was too <laughs> it was too slow for me. So I just skipped it all. I think this is more of a skill thing, but there were a couple of sections where I felt like I just couldn't avoid getting hit, and I found it a bit unfair. I And I, I replayed them a couple of times trying to work out how you would get through this without getting hit, and I couldn't figure it out. Just on certain sections of certain levels, not enough to like take me out completely, but just enough to get hit. Now, I'm sure there is a way to get through them without getting hit. I couldn't find them, and, that's it. and it wasn't often, just kind of maybe two or three times during the whole game. Um, but yeah, I found that quite frustrating that there wasn't a way to avoid getting hit. So if, if there is a, a, a shmup fan out there, <laughs> um, let me know if that is a thing, or if, if I just need to get good, <laughs> as, they, as they say. So all in all, for my first, first shmup, I had a really good time. It certainly made me um, more open to the genre. Um, kind of more interested in. I do own a couple of other shmups. I own Death Smiles and uh, Akai Katana. I don't know if that's the right name, <laughs> but another another shmup on the Xbox on the 360. Um, so yeah, I own a couple of other shmups. So I, it's got me more enthused to play through them at some point in the future and just see how this one compares. Maybe this isn't a very good shmup. I don't know, but I, I really enjoyed my time with it, and I would give it a seven out of ten. Right, and the final game, which was not on the backlog to start with. Um, so this is one of the changes I've made is I have brought... Let me. This would be a good time to show it, actually. So the final game is Alex Kids and the Enchanted Castle on the Sega Mega Drive. But let me uh, minimize this and talk through it all. So 
spoiler spoiler for my uh, review of Alex Kidd there, 5 out of 10. Um, but this 407 here was the amount of games that I started the 2024 Backlog Challenge with. And you can see that number's gone up considerably. So that's not new games. There were just certain games in my collection that I hadn't included in the backlog because I thought I didn't really want to play them. But I don't know what's happened over the past month. I think it's because I've been watching kind of a, a couple of YouTube channels on like retro game collecting and stuff that it's got me more into um, wanting to play some kind of retro games. So what I have added is my PS1 library of ones that I want to play, which wasn't in there originally. Um, and then SNES, Mega Drive, and NES. I d the, none, none of the Nintendo ones are physical. I've got the um, the minis, so like the SNES mini and the NES mini. Um, and I didn't put them on because I, I just went through a period where I wasn't really wanting to play kind of proper retro games. But now I'm back in that mindset of wanting to play retro games. So I've added them in. Um, as I say, they're not owned physically. They're on the SNES Mini and the NES Mini. But I've added those for the SNES, and I've added these for the NES. Um, and then for the Mega Drive, I actually do own a few physical Mega Drive game games. Um, but also, I own two different collections. Um, one Mega Drive collection on the 360, and one that I actually picked up in March, which is what sparked adding these back in for the Xbox One because it was on sale for like two pound, three pound or four pound or something for like 30 games. Um, so I've added these in, which are all the Mega Drive games that I kind of want to play at some point. So that has bumped up the backlog. I haven't, there haven't been any um, new games added to this. These were all, as I say, ones that I owned, apart from the, the, the few Mega Drive games in the collection I've just bought that weren't on the 360 one, probably about 10, 10 new ones. Um, so that's why that's gone up, which means in brackets is the original and the, the main number is what it now is. So the hours have gone up. The average length of games actually gone down because there's lots of retro games. And that's another reason it's quite nice to have some small ones that I can just beat in a day. Um, so that's that's been added. Um, and there's another change as well, but I will talk through Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle now first. <laughs> So, you may be wondering, with that huge list of Mega Drive games, why did I choose Alex Kidd and Enchanted Castle? Well, the answer is very simple. I just opened up the, the Sega Mega Drive collection game, and the first game on the list, because it's alphabetical, was Alex Kidd and Enchanted Castle, so I thought I'd just play that. Um, so, I, as the spoiler, as I just showed you, I gave this game a 5 out of 10. Um, I still enjoyed playing through it because it was only about an hour and a half, two hour experience um, and it was fun. It's like going back and playing a retro game and there's the, the novelty of that and the nostalgia of that era. But I've rated it just on like how good it is compared to other games of the era like Mario and stuff in terms of platforming. So it's it's a platformer. I'll, I'll put some gameplay up so you'll see. But it's, it's a platformer. It's just the it doesn't feel like a very good platformer in terms of like gameplay like how tight the jumping and the control of that is and, and the mechanics and that type of thing it's it wasn't hugely enjoyable to actually play through it was quite frustrating it was quite easy to make mistakes because i didn't feel like i had full control over the character um it did have plenty of good uh points as well more bad than good um, so it, it's a platformer. You, I think there's 11 stages. You play through each stage. You get to like the stereotypical castle level at the end. You fight the end boss and it's, it's done. It doesn't take very long to play through. It is difficult. Um, well, I found it difficult, but because I was playing it through the collection, there were save states. So whenever I got through a different section, I would just save it. You can also rewind as well. So it made it a breeze to play through, which I'm fine with because... I just want to go back and experience these games. I don't need the difficulty of like practicing it for dozens of hours to be able to play through it all the way through with the starting lives kind of thing. There's definitely a point towards the end where I would have got game over several times and had to start again. So I'm happy to not have to do that. One of, I'm trying to think what sets this game 
apart from other games. It is very much a stereotypical platformer of the era. Um, you collect coins like you do in many, many other games, and you can use those uh, to play at the end of each level, or sometimes you can find him within a level to play this weird, like, rock, rock, um, what was it, rock, paper, scissor <laughs> game with this kind of gorilla person. Um, and if you win, you get items and prizes and things. But if you lose, you can you can die. You can lose a life. Um, but because I had the rewinds, I never lost. Because if I did lose, I'd rewind it five seconds and do the right one. So I kind of cheated my way through the game. But I, I don't care. I have no regrets. Um, which definitely made it a bit easier. But these items you get, you can either get through chests or from playing this game. Give you certain ability. So you can have one that like enables you to fly until you hit something so you gotta try and not not get hit you have ones that and there's a motorbike that enables you to like ram the enemies and stuff there's ones that give you invincibility for a certain period of time um so they're very useful to have and parts of the part of the tactics i think is using these at the right moment and especially if you didn't have the if you're playing it on the original hardware and you couldn't rewind or have save states these would become even more important you'd have to tactically decide which levels you're going to use certain items at and, and 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 so forth to make it a bit easier for you the actual level design itself um there's nothing overly special i'd say um there is some decent variety in terms of like the locations you're at there's the, the usual ones you'd expect there's the underwater level there's the mountain level there's the one that's kind of going through a woodland there's the open plains level like very similar to kind of mario-esque levels and then you finish on a castle level um, but yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with the levels per se. It's just, it's nothing amazing. It's just passable platforming. Um, the last level, the castle, I, I got stuck on for a long time. I just couldn't work out where I was supposed to go. And I was going around in circles. It's kind of like a maze, but not once I knew the solution, it's not that bad. Um, but I was stuck on it for about half an hour, 40 minutes until I finally, um, had enough and I looked up a guide and there was a hidden wall. So it was just a normal wall, but you had to go up and, and hit a certain block and it would open up, which is a big thing in this game. Like you can do that in a lot of places, but I just didn't, for whatever reason, didn't think to do it. So um, yeah, I was stuck for it until I looked at that guide and I was like, oh, okay. And then got through and, and completed, completed the level. Um, so there are sections like that where you've kind of got to remember that there are secret passages and secret doorways and things to find. Yeah, so all in all, I, I enjoyed going back to it and I'm glad I've played through it. It's 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 kind of a piece of gaming history. And I think they have remade it or, or made like sequels of it on modern. I'm fairly sure one came out recently, like within the last few years on uh, on modern consoles, like an Alex Kidd game. Um, so maybe that will have fixed a lot of the issues I have with this one. I'll have a look into that because that might be a game that I would want to play. Because there's definitely fun to be had here. Um, it's just not the best by any means in the genre, in my opinion. So as I say, I'd given it a 5 out of 5. Um, and yeah, I will certainly be looking to play some more kind of Mega Drive SNES games in, in the future. So the other change I've made was one of the rules was I was only allowed to buy a game for the collection when I beat a game. I have uh, I scrapped that idea. I've, I've kind of uh, I've kind of fallen off the wagon with that one. These are these are the the games that I bought in March. <laughs> so, as you can see, um, I did not um, beat that many games in March, um, and the main reason for that is just I've realised I'm not beating as many games as I would need to to meet my collecting objectives. Um, I've said in the past. I'm really trying to get um, all of the Xbox 360 games that I want to play before I think the Xbox 360 prices start going up. I think they will at some point. I think they've started to already. And I don't want to get to the stage where there's still Xbox 360 games that I want to own that have gone up to like 100, 150 quid, whatever, because I'm not going to pay those prices. So it'll just mean I never get them. So I've decided that I'm... Yeah, the backlog's just going to grow and grow and grow until I get to the stage where I've got all the games I want. But I'm not adding them until the back to the backlog until 2025, until January 2025. So for this year, 2024, it's only games that I had at the start of this year. 
So I'm not going to get distracted by new ones in the collection. I'll beat ones that have been in the collection for a while. So yeah, I am now back for this month at least. I've been collecting pretty hardcore again. So I'll just run through quickly. I'm not going to show gameplay or talk through them too much. But for those that are interested, if you're not interested in this, thanks for watching. You can stop watching the video now. But this is just like a little pickup section. So first off, we have uh, Small Soldiers on the PS1, which is a game that I've got huge nostalgia for. It's a game uh, that I played. Oh, why is that not going to focus? It's a game that I uh, I played multiplayer with mates when I was a, a kid. I used to go around my friend's house every morning before school to walk to the bus station with him, um, and we'd have to I'd have to wait for him and basically his sisters to get ready before we left. And there was always about a fifteen minute period, so we always used to play a game, and that is one that we popped in quite often. Um, then on the Wii. We've got Knight's, ooh, Knight's Journey of Dreams. I need to get used to showing these in an inverted camera. Um, this is just one. It's not one that I like particularly wanted to, to pick up, but it was on my, on my list of games that I want to pick up. And I went to this shop. Um, so the address is on there. There you go. Anyway. It's in Swindon. Um, I don't live in. I live in Chippenham, a bit away from Swindon. But it's in Swindon. It's the first time I'd ever been to that shop, and they. It was. It's an amazing retro game shop. So if you live in the UK anywhere near Swindon, I heavily recommend it. Um, and I picked up quite a few things in there, just because the the prices were quite good and they were in good condition. Um, this one I picked up from CX. So I I have a very very small GameCube collection. So I thought I'd start adding to that a little bit. Um, so. Super Mario Sunshine, and the prices on there are what I, are what I paid. Um, so yeah, kind of a, a must-have for the GameCube, really. One that I've wanted for a while um, is Eternal Darkness. So I always had in my head that this was a really expensive game, but it turns out it's not. Um, it's still quite pricey. I paid um, 20, oh, £25 pounds for it. But I, I I don't know why I had it in my head that it's one of those that was like close to 100, but it's not. It's not at all, which is good because it means I can get it and it's supposed to be a really fun, enjoyable game. And then finally, Star Fox Adventures on the GameCube as well um, from that same shop as well. And then for the original Xbox, so I got this off eBay, um, Morrowinds. So the for in the Elder Scrolls series, the one that was before Oblivion and Skyrim. Um, I think this is probably going to be quite dated, but it, it is one that I want to play through and give a go at some point. And then all the rest are Xbox 360 games. So I'll run through these quickly. Shellshock 2, Blood Trails, which is one that I um, hadn't heard of before, but is like a a typical first-person shooter from the genre, but I love those types of games. So I'm hoping that will have some some good gameplay to it. Earth Defense Force is the last Earth Defense Force game that I needed, um, and it's the most expensive of the bunch. Only £15, but again, I think these are the type of games that are going to go up in price. Body Count, another like first-person shooter um, from that era. Oop which looks quite good. Um, Baja, Edge of Control, um, which is like a, a like a rally cross, um, um, what's the name, like Dakar Rally type game. I don't think it actually is the Dakar Rally, but it's racing through that kind of terrain. Um, King of Fighters 13, which is one that I've wanted to pick up for a little while. Um, and I've never played a King of Fighters game. I think this is the first King of Fighters games, King of Fighters game I own. Um, so it's good to have that in the collection. And that that was ten pounds. Almost there. I think I'll have to throw up some gameplay at some point in here because <laughs> this is a long time of me just showing boxes. Um, Need for Speed Shift. So I'm trying to get all of the Need for Speed games on the Xbox 360. Um, and Shift is one that I have still needed. I've I've got probably just over half of them now. Uh, Mirror's Edge, I don't know how this wasn't in my collection, only £2. Um, I played through this 
most of the way, not all of the way, um, back when it first came out. I think I did own it and then got rid of the game at some point. Tekken 6. So <laughs> I'm sure it's a good game, but I don't know if any of you have ever done this. I was ad I have an app that tells me which games I own and which games I need. And um, I was adamant that I needed this. I didn't even bother checking the app. Got home. I already owned it. So that was a bit of a waste. <laughs> so I can use it for trading. Um, and then Dragon Age 2, which um, I think is, is, by all accounts, is a really good game. But I didn't check when I was there. And it's a bit annoying. The corner's really mangled. So I need a replacement case for that. But it was only, it was only £4. So... I mean, as long as you've got the game, that is uh, not the end of the world. So, yeah, that's um, that's it for this month for March update. Uh, I will be continuing to do the same thing. As I say, all of those games that I've just shown you, they will not be added to this backlog challenge until 2025. So everything this year will be stuff that was already on it. I just want to make the most of the cheap price as well I can. Um, yeah, so as always, I know some people are starting to do regular updates now, which is great. But if you um, want to, please let me know what you've been playing, uh, what you've got through in March, any rec recommendations, that type of thing. Thank you for watching. If you're still here at this point, um, please drop a like and subscribe if you're not already. It all helps a lot. The channel's doing really well at the moment. In terms, I mean, it's still a tiny, tiny channel. But I think we've got we've added about 90 subscribers just over the last month which we were under 400. So in terms of percentage, that's huge growth. And um, we're going to be at 500 soon. Um, I just put out that post asking what people wanted. I'm going to do a video for the 500 subscribers. So it looks like it's going to be um, my top 20 games of all time, which will be a really fun video to make, but it's going to take a bit of time. So it might not be out when I hit 500 if it keeps going at this rate, because that's going to take me a little while to make. Um, but yeah, thank you for all the support. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And uh, yeah, I will be, potentially that will be the next video um, if I have time to make it and we actually get to 500 before next month. But if not, I will see you at the uh, end of April for the next update. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and uh, on to the next one.